Welcome, friends, to another video of training. You know, today we're going to be focusing on low voltage shorts. Yes, this is a 3 amp fuse that has been popped. You know, and many times, you know, you go to the service call and it's Friday, 4 p.m., and you just want to finish this last service call and you find this. Why do we get low voltage shorts? Well, we're going to find out in today's video. So a low voltage short has to do with the low voltage side of the system. So we have a transformer right here. It's taking in high voltage and dropping it down to 24 volts. So it has to do with anything from the 24 volts side of the system. And there's a lot of things that the 24 volts powers up. Uh, you got your contactor coil, as you can see here, right? You got a contactor coil that receives 24 volts. So this can, be, can get pushed in. You also have a, a thermostat. Uh, you all, this is a heat pump, so you have a solenoid valve for the re reversing valve. Um, and you have an ECM motor that also takes a common and 24 volts. But as you can see, there's a lot of things that take 24 volts here. But we're gonna go ahead and first confirm we have 24 volts coming out. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and check. I'm just gonna go ahead and check these leads. And these two that I'm checking are coming straight from that transformer, these two. So let's go ahead and check that we're getting 24 volts and we are getting 27 volts. So we're getting our low voltage. A short is basically this. Um, in an operating system, these 24 volts go to my contactor coil, right? And you can see it, you can, you can see that contactor coil being engaged and that's being pushed and allowing power to go through, right? You can see that. Um, that coil is a load. That's okay if they go to a load, they're working together to then um, flow current back and forth. But a short is when they both touch each other before they get to the load. And go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and do a little demonstration. Look at this resettable 3M fuse, right? And so instead, instead of putting one of these, Right here, I put one of these because it's resettable. If this pops, then I gotta replace it with the with the new uh, fuse. But look at what happens when they both touch each other. Okay, I'm gonna have you see that. I'm gonna touch them, touch touching them to each other. It popped. It popped because it pulled more than three amps, and you can see it, right? It's kind of you see that that spark there. So these two have to go to a load. If they go to each other right away. It pops the fuse. The way I like to uh, think of these, uh, these are two gang members. These two gangs, these two gangs don't like each other, right? They're gonna fight. They're gonna fight. But if they go to a gang rehabilitation program, right? If they go to a gang rehab program, they can now work together. Well, hopefully, right? But you hope they can work together, right? And now. Um, those 24 volts now, we're sending current back and forth, back and forth, engaging that coil to be, you know, to push down. That coil is being engaged, pushing the contacts down. But you can see, right, they're working together because they're going to a load. But before they go to a load, if they touch each other, they're going to pop that fuse. They don't like each other. These gang members do not like each other. They're going to fight. They need to go to a load. And that applies going to the contactor coil, the thermostat the solenoid valve, anything that takes 24 volts, these two must go to a load and not to each other. So where are some of the common places where you could potentially get a low voltage short? Well, with one of them is your contactor coil. This coil, you have to make sure you have a healthy ohms reading or a good resistance in the coil. So um, you'll see different manufacturers say different things, but I like to see between 10 uh, to 20 ohms. So you see this one here, we're getting about 15 ohms. So that's good. That means we have some resistance in this uh, coil. But if you go to a contactor that has like two or three ohms, that's not good. That means that the resistance is so low that more current is going to go and flow in that contactor coil, um, perhaps exceeding the three amps and popping the fuse. Or what if you have a short in here, meaning that now you have no resistance 
And when you put your 24 volts, it's like if both of these are just touching each other, right? You need to have resistance in that coil. So I'm going to go ahead and show you just a quick example of what I mean by that. So I'm going to just go ahead and send power to that contact or coil. So there we go. So on a good working contact or coil, at least in my experience, I've seen that it pulls about 0.2 amps. So let's go ahead and, and show you that. All, I, all I'm doing is going to one of the leads here. You see it's pulling about 0 0.3, 0 0.2. But look what happens when that, let's say that you have a pitted, a pitted contact, right? You got a pitted contact, or in this case, um, um, you have low resistance in that coil. I'm gonna go ahead and, and kind of pull that up, and I'm I'm just pulling on that on that uh, on the con I'm pulling on that plunger there up, and I'm having it fight a little bit more. Um, you see, now it's pulling 0.8. So of course, this is a good example of if you have pitted contacts, you're gonna pull more current. But if you have a a contact or coil that has low resistance, you're gonna pull more current. But now I'm gonna let go. Right and let it do it, do its thing. Now I was able to just make a good contact going down. You see, I'm only pulling 0.2. Um, so this is one of them. W one of the things you have to check always is that the contactor coil has a healthy resistance on the coil. Another thing you want to do is ground your common. And so what do I mean by that? Well, you have 24 volts coming out, right? Your hot, which is right here, and my common. But look at my common. The blue wire is coming in here, and then it goes into two wires. Uh, that brown is going to all the places that um, that will need a common, like uh, one side of the contactor coil, uh, your thermostat, the solenoid valve. Um, a lot of things need common, but that same wire has a ground wire coming out of it. You see, you have a green wire, green and yellow, that goes to the actual metal casing the metal um, of the unit and why is that well remember uh, my hot and my common can never touch each other right they can never touch each other and and have in mind this hot is also going to different places of the system it's going to the other side of the contact coil is powering up that solenoid valve is powering up the thermostat it's going to different places and there can be times where because of the vibration of the system, uh, this wire is on the wrong place. It starts to rub and expose some of the copper. And you want the system to, to trip and to tell you that, hey, there's an issue. My fuse tripped. And you can go, uh, th that can prompt you to go ahead and fix the issue. But I'm going to go ahead and simulate what would happen if, let's say, HOD is touching your metal casing. Um, just because just cause now, my whole unit is common, right? Because now that I grounded my common and my common is grounded, my whole unit is a common, if you want to think about it that way. My whole unit is common. So wherever that hot touches, any, anywhere that's metal, it's going to trip because the whole unit is common. And we remember, and, and we said that hot and common can never touch each other. But let's go ahead and test it. I'm going to go ahead and just touch any metal place because that, that ground is going to the metal and the metal's just going everywhere, right? So I'm just going to touch there. See? That tripped. So um, you want to ground common because it allows for two things. Um, some one is if you don't ground your common, sometimes let's say this hot, hot, this hot of my 24 volts is touching metal, you start getting these weird voltage drops that you, you don't really want to deal with. So that kind of just goes with the second reason. The second reason is that that tells you that there's an issue. It prompts you to look for an issue by you grounding the common. And so the second place, we already kind of talked about the contact recoil being one of the re uh, reasons where you'll find a, uh, a um, the reason why you'll have a low voltage short. Another one is your pressure switches. So in this specific carrier unit, this is what you have. You have 24 volts that the board sends out through this wire. If my pressure switch is good, it comes back this way. Then it comes to this higher pressure switch. If it's, it, it comes out, 
If it's good, it comes back this way. And then it sends 24 volts from here, from this plug to my con to my contact recoil. But why is it? And, and you can see right now, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can show you here. Right now, my, my fuse, you can see it right, now, right there next to the meter. It's not popped. It's fine. Everything's good. But why is it when I call for cooling? And I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm not going to do it through the thermostat. Um, I always like to say I'm the thermostat now. So what does the thermostat do when I have a call for cooling? It basically just connects the R and the Y together. But go ahead and kind of see if you can look here with the with the fuse. Okay, you can see it right there. I'm going to go ahead and, and touch R and Y. And you see it popped it. Why would it do that? Why would it do that when I am calling for cooling only and not when... You know, it was on standby. Well, let's go now and follow these wires, and I'll show you why. So we'll follow these wires, and these wires go all the way over here. So it's going to make to a pressure switch, which is right, right there, right? A pressure switch. So a pressure switch is not a load. It doesn't take common. It's just power in, power out. Twenty-four volts in. 24 volts out. It does not take a common. It's not a load. But in this case, what I did, um, I exposed some of the copper. You can see right here, uh, some of the copper I, I exposed. Very, very little. You can see it right there. So what I did, I basically, on one side of the alligator clip, um, basically I basically attached it to that discharge line. And it doesn't matter if it's a discharge line, suction line, um, liquid line anywhere here. Remember, all this is common. So um, a lot of the times, these wires here don't get a lot of love. They're just hanging in there. They're rubbing with your discharge line, which is your hottest line of the system. There's a lot of vibration, and it ends up exposing some of that that uh, copper. It is, is, ends up exposing some of that copper on that wire, and then you get that low voltage short. But one way you can um, check to see if you have a uh, if you're gonna have an issue it's a simple test a simple test so I'm gonna go ahead and put the my meter um, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on on continuity and it can be honestly it can be different different things that you can you, you can do it on ohms or continuity but let's go ahead and just kind of make sure that doesn't fall and let's just put um, just for this example, let's go ahead and do uh, continuity, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and just test my leads that it's working, okay, we're good. So I'm gonna go ahead and take one wire out, right? Because we, we said I, I, uh, I sabotaged the, the pressure switch on these blue wires going that way. So all you're doing is pulling one wire, you can pull both wires out, but on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and touch this one, right? Or first, go ahead and test if it's working. Okay, it's good. Test this one, and then I'm gonna to touch the metal casing. You see, I'm getting continuity. That's not good. That means that hot, because it sends hot out through this pressure switch, right? And it comes back, but somewhere along the lines, it's touching the metal casing. And because I grounded common, basically it's hot and common touching each other, and that'll be a, a, a low voltage short. So this is a test, just doing a continuity test. It should be open line when you do this test. So another place you wanna look at is your thermostat. You have uh, 24 volts here present at all time. This is what powers up your thermostat, right? Your red wire, your power, your common. Uh, G, that's for independent fan. Uh, y is for cooling, W is for heating. So um, let's go ahead and look at that, at that thermostat. So let's say, you know, you just have, you just want air moving in your house. You just put a fan on. 24 volts goes from here and it sends it to G. If I want heating, 24, it sends 24 volts to my W. If I want cooling, it sends 24 volts to my Y. But uh, let's, say, uh, let's say we're doing the fan, right? Just the fan, okay? What if when sending 24 volts here, your, your fuse pops? You know, a lot of things can happen, have in mind, this this system at least this specific system we only have a couple of inches of thermostat wire but let's say 
the wire is extending maybe 20, 30, 40 feet, right? From the unit all the way to the thermostat. What if that G, before it goes out, is touching the metal casing? We said that the, the, the system is common because I grounded the common. What if um, that green wire is shorting to my common? That would cause an issue. Um, let's go ahead and, and take a look at what I did here. I kind of sabotaged the system so you can see what would happen. But let's go ahead and pop that uh, that unit, uh, that system back here, uh, the thermostat back. And I'm going to show you an example and see if you can, you can see it. So you can see the thermostat and you can see my fuse over here. And I know it's a little blurry, but I want you to just to see the top. And I'll, and I'll get a closer view of it. Look what happens when I call for fan, just for fan. Okay. The fuse popped. That fuse popped. So let's get a little closer. You see that fuse popped. And why is that? Well, because I, like I said, I ended up sabotaging it. So... Um, this is what I did. Um, I basically shorted my my G and my common right here. My G and my common. So this, of course, you probably wouldn't see this out in the field, but this could happen due to external factors. Let's say that thermostat wire, right? It's it's 50 feet from here all the way to your thermostat. It's 50 feet. What if uh, something is crushing that that thermostat? And that could possibly short the G and the common. Uh, what if a rat chewed up, chewed through the wire? Now these two are touching each other. That can also cause an issue. A drywall screw, boom, goes through the wires. These two are shorting to each other. And, and, it's, and it's interesting because when the thermostat is on standby, nothing happens. When you call for, for your fan, um, it tripped. So because... Obviously, R sends 24 volts to G, and G and common are, are shorting to each other, each other. So it will only happen when you have that call, right? Uh, not when it's on standby. Uh, but a simple test that you can do, you can pop this thermostat head out. And just to kind of show you the example, you simply what you can simply do is remove your C and your G, right? So I have my C and my G right there, right? C and G. So I, I popped it. Uh, I, so I popped the thermostat head out, right? And my G and my, my C are there. When checking it here, I should not have a path, right? You should not have a path from G and C. If everything is working fine, you should not have a path. You should not have continuity. But look what happens when I do check it. So I'm going to go ahead and strap this here and see and look at what happens when I check G and, and common. You see, I'm getting a path, but I'm going to go ahead and fix that quote unquote uh, short, right? <laughs> quote unquote short. I'm going to go ahead and fix it. Let's say I fix that short. Okay, good. I found the issue in the attic. I found the issue. And then you come and boom, you're not getting a path anymore. So that's good. I fixed the issue. So have in mind, you have to isolate it. Disconnect the wires of the control board. Disconnect the, the thermostat head. And then like that, you can go ahead and see if you're having a, a short uh, in the system. But as you can see, finding voltage shorts can be difficult because you have to find you have to look in different places but you're looking at the most common places 24 volts going to my pressure switches to my thermostat or a contactor coil that is failing i hope this video helps and i will catch you on the next one